So I'm going to start in the very center of the page with a tiny circle and work my way out with other slightly larger circles. So it doesn't, you don't need to be completely accurate, just guess roughly where the center is and draw a tiny circle in the middle. And now I'll keep drawing slightly larger circles around the outside of that circle. Try not to let your lines touch, but try to get the new circle as close to the last one without those lines touching each other. So leave a gap that feels kind of challenging but comfortable for you. As I'm drawing these circles, I'm bringing my awareness to the spot where I begin and end each circle. As the circles are quite small at the moment, I'm drawing them in one line and one movement. So I keep focusing my attention on that beginning and end point of the circle. This really helps me to stay focused on the drawing and just not be drawn into the million other things that I could be thinking about. But I do notice that sometimes, even when I do that, my mind does begin to wander. So don't worry if that happens to you, just bring your attention back to the drawing and carry on. One thing that I find really helps me is to keep actually changing the point of the beginning and end of each circle. So in this one, I've started at the top edge. Next, I might start over to the right hand side and continue my circle this way. And the next circle, I will perhaps begin at the bottom. Just making these small changes is it's just enough to nudge my thinking mind back onto the drawing. As you start to get bigger with your circle, you might find it helpful to have an extra piece of paper or scrap paper or tissue just underneath your hand because it's very easy for this part of your hand here to start picking up the ink and smudging it on the page. Once you start to do that, you might find that you have to draw your circle in two or more sections instead of one continuous line. But that's okay, just keep thinking about those start and end points even when they're in a half circle. The other thing you'll see me doing now as the circle gets a bit bigger is I start to rotate the paper as well. Um, this is also another helpful way of keeping my mind active on the drawing. Um, just because it keeps offering a little bit of a sort of mental break um, every few seconds to move the drawing. So I'm able to sort of refocus back on the drawing again each time I move it. As the circle gets a little bigger, it might start to get less circular and a little more wonky. This is totally okay. In fact, I really love the wonkiness, which I'll be talking about that a bit more later. So at this point, we have a lovely freeform concentric circle pattern. And you could stop here if you like what you have or if you don't have much time today but I'm going to continue creating more circles so I can fill up the page. As you get closer to the edges of the page, you won't be able to draw full circles anymore. So just keep repeating the shapes outside to make that concentric shape to fill in those corners. Something else that I often do with this type of pattern that you might have noticed is I change the direction of the lines that I'm drawing. So sometimes I'll create that curve in a clockwise direction and then sometimes I'll do it in an anti-clockwise direction. So I think sometimes just changing it up can also just help to bring your mind back to the drawing. Okay, so the drawing part is done. I just now need to take the tape off and then that will be day one's drawing complete. 
If you are using tape as well, um, just a tip to help you take it off without tearing the paper is just keep the angle of it quite low to the paper um, going back on itself. So don't be tempted to just pull it up. Always keep it low and just back on itself and quite slow. And hopefully we can take it off without tearing the paper. And here we are, day one's concentric prompt drawing completed. Thank you.